Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of C++ Data Structures. Today we're going to look at uh, selection sort. So uh, we've just started uh, looking at some elementary data structures with things like singly linked lists and uh, stacks. Uh, another big part uh, when we're you know, in any normal data structures course, uh, they usually talk about both data structures and algorithms. So we're going to introduce uh, the idea of algorithms here, and in later videos or another series, we'll actually get into things like the uh, uh, the time complexity of an algorithm. Say it's its best case, its worst case, and its average case time complexity. But for now, we'll just look at how do we implement these basic uh, search algorithms or sorting algorithms. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, uh, some basic sorting algorithms and of course the first thing we're going to start with is a uh, selection sort now selection store uh, sort if we go ahead and go to the example uh, so selection sort is a very basic uh, sorting algorithm where we simply for every single index we want to sort a list say from uh, least to greatest so what we do is for the uh, zeroth index uh, so for the very first item in a list, what we want to do is we want to go all the way down until we find the smallest item. So we just keep track of whatever index holds the smallest item, and then at the very end of the list we should know uh, what's the smallest item because we've searched through every single item. And then what we'll do is we'll just swap whatever's currently in that position which with whatever is smallest. So let's look at how we do that, or how we'd implement that. So let's look at selection sort.cpp. Uh, so we'll need uh, a little helper function here. So we'll have this, uh, this swap function. So it'll take two pointers, a pointer to a memory location A, and then a pointer to a memory location B. And all it will do is it will swap the values at the, those uh, locations using a temp, uh, a temp variable to store uh, A while we assign A the value of B. Okay, so that's, that's just swap. So let's actually look at insertion sort. So what does insertion sort do? So we, like I said, we have to keep track of the minimum value at every single point. And uh, we do this through just keeping track of whatever index holds the minimum value in say an array. So what we'll do is we will search. Uh, so, well, we will first go through uh, every single position in the, uh, in the array, except for the last position. So we'll do n minus one iterations of this loop. And the reason why we do n minus one iterations is because uh, the, uh, uh, the reason why we do n minus one iterations is because uh, the very last iteration, we only have one item in the list left, uh, left to sort. And so there's nothing else to compare to. It's at the very end of the list. So it, by definition, will be, uh, uh, it will be sorted. Uh, it will be in the correct position because all previous elements have been put in their correct spot in the list. So the leftover one at the very end, we don't need to do. We get that for free. Okay, so what we'll do each iteration is we'll set the min key equal to the index of the current position. And the reason why is we just assume, okay, we'll just assume whatever's in that spot right there is the right uh, value until we find an index that says, hey, the value with this index is actually smaller. And that's what we do here. So we search all of the remaining elements. So we start at uh, element i. So we start at i plus one, the next element, and go to the end of the list. And then every single time we just do this comparison. We check if the value stored at that, uh, uh, at, the at the later index is less than the value stored at the current index. And if it is, what we'll do is we'll just set min key equal to j. So we'll just keep track of uh, over every iteration if a later value is the minimum. Okay, and then at the very end, min key should hold whatever element we found in the remainder of the list that's the smallest. And so what we'll do is we'll print out uh, which index uh, we're swapping. And so we're going to swap i with uh, whichever one we found was the min key. Now these two values could be the same. So say if a element in the list was already smallest, like let's say if we have a list that has 10 elements and they're, uh, they're already in place. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and those are the values stored there. And let's say uh, we call insertion sort on, uh, so for the first element, 
we see whatever goes there. Now, in this case, i will be equal to zero. It will never get reset inside of this if statement because zero will be the smallest value in the list. So both uh, i and min key will both be zero. And in that case, it swaps with itself, which is okay. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and print out the swap and we'll kind of visualize that before actually doing the swap and then continuing on with the next element. So what we're basically doing is on the left hand side of the array, we're building up gradually uh, a sub list of sorted elements. So uh, every single time our search space for later elements gets smaller and smaller and smaller as our sorted list grows. Okay, and so what we'll do here is we'll just create an arbitrarily sized array. So we'll just do say seven entries. We'll initialize them with random integers between uh, zero and 100. And then we'll call insertion sort. And we should get a printout. So let's go ahead and compile this. So G++ dash O insertion sort, or selection sort, I'm sorry. Uh, and then selection sort dot CPP. Great, now let's run it. All right, so let's go to the very top here. So let's see what happens. So starting out, we have, this is our list initially. So it goes 83, 86, 77, 15, 93, 35, 86. So we start out with the zeroth element. And in the zeroth element, we look for the smallest number in the list. So we find it's 15. So we have to swap 15 and 83. And then we see that after we do that swap, 15's in the correct spot, and we just threw 83 uh, later in the list. It doesn't really matter where we throw uh, a number in that swap because we really just care that on the left-hand side, uh, all of those uh, lower index elements are sorted. Uh, we don't make any guarantees about what's later in the list. So 83 could wind up in the right spot or, or could not, but we don't really care at this point. Okay, so then we move on to the uh, second item in the list. So now our, our list is this 15, 86, 77, 83, etc. So we find the next smallest element in the list. So we go across, we find that 35 is the second smallest element in the list. So we'll go ahead and swap 86 and 35, and then 35 will now be uh, in the uh, first index, so 0 and then 1, and then 86 will now be over here near the end of the list. And we'll go ahead and continue doing this. So in the special case right here, uh, this is where uh, 77 ended up being uh, the value that was supposed to be in this index 2. So index 0, index 1, index 2. There are no smaller elements than 77 in the list. So it performs a swap with itself, which essentially just leaves it in place. Okay, and then we continue on. 83 has the same thing happen. Uh, then we look at over here, so we have to do a one position swap between 93 and 86. And then finally at the very end we have to swap 93 and another 86 that happens to be in the list. And then we see our final result where we get 15, 35, 77, 83, 86, 86, 93. So we've uh, essentially sorted our list. Okay, so that's going to do it for this example. Again. This is going to be a selection sort. This is a very basic sorting mechanism, but as you can see, eh, it works. Uh, okay, so that's going to do it for this video. As always, feel free to go on uh, github.com slash coffee before arch for all code uh, in this video and in other videos such as the uh, parallelism in C++ series where we do multiprocessor programming, the GPU programming video uh, series called CUDA Crash Course, or the Python or MIPS assembly stuff. So we looked at C++ data structures today, and then we've got links to all the videos, my contact information if you have a specific uh, topic that you would like covered, and then of course uh, here's the files associated with the videos, and like I said, the YouTube video links. So we looked at selection sort today. So feel free to download this and play around with it. And like I said, in another uh, set of video series where we look at algorithmic complexity, we'll actually start plotting uh, what these, uh, what these, uh, the, how long these algorithms take for different sized inputs. Okay, so like I said, uh, that's going to do it for today. My name's Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.